Hello everyone, welcome back to Spectrum Classes. In this video, we are going to discuss Pauli's principle. How we are going to understand this Pauli's principle in quantum mechanics. In addition to Pauli's principle, we are also going to discuss the wave functions which are symmetric and which are anti-symmetric. So these two concepts we are going to discuss in this video. So let's start with the video. So the Pauli's principle requires when the labels of any two identical fermions are exchanged, the total wave function changes sign that is anti-symmetry. So let me explain this. First term is fermions. What is called fermions? So electrons are fermions and fermions are those particles which are having their spin is equal to half integral. So on this fermions and bosons, I have made one video before this. So you can go and check that video. When the electrons, so instead of fermions, I am here onwards use electrons because here we are going to discuss this Pauli's principle with respect to the electrons. The electrons are exchanged. Then the wave function, if it changes its sign, then that is termed as anti-symmetric wave function. And if the wave function is anti-symmetric with respect to the exchange of electrons to that Pauli's principle applicable. So here psi 1 2 is the wave function of a system which is having two electrons. We can have more than two electrons and number of electrons also. But just to simplify this situation we are using this two electron system. Now coming to the next when the labels of any two identical bosons, so what are called bosons? Bosons are those which are having their spins equal to integer including zero. So those are termed as bosons. Are exchange, the sign of the total wave function remains the same. Means the psi 1, 2 will not change its sign when we change the level of the electrons. You might find it difficult to understand at this moment. So I elaborate it in this video in detail. So first I will tell you what does it mean psi 1 2. So suppose the two electrons in an atom occupy an orbital psi. Because Pauli's exclusion principle works when two electrons are occupied the same orbital. Say 1 is 2. So two electrons occupy the same orbital. So here n is equal to 1, l is equal to 0 for this s, m is equal to ml is equal to 0 for this s orbital and ms is equal to plus minus half. So these are the four quantum numbers for these two electrons. So this these three are same but here only these two are changed for these two electrons. Right? So this is how we are going to understand here that the two electrons occupy an orbital psi. Then in the orbital approximation, the overall wave function is psi 1, psi 2. So I am going to explain it. In the orbital approximation, we suppose that this exact wave function is obtained by thinking of each electron as occupying its own orbital and you can understand it in this manner. So here we are having two electrons which are identical. Just to compose its wave function, let us suppose both the electrons occupy their own orbitals just to avoid the complexity of the wave function because Schrodinger wave equation is solved for the one electron system and many electron system it is having very complicated solution. So we will go step by step. Suppose these two electrons occupy these orbitals and if this or electron is electron number 1 then the wave function for this electron is psi 1. It is supposed that this is electron number 2 and the wave function for this electron is psi 2. And the system which is having two electrons all together the overall wave function for this system is equal to psi 1 2 right so 1 2 stands for the electron number 1 and 2 so here psi 1 2 represents the psi 1 psi 2 wave function this is the space part is this space part means that these two electrons 
are in their orbitals. Psi 2 1 if we change the label as both the electrons are identical and we do not know which electron is one electron and which electron is two electron then if we change the label then we get a situation like this psi 2 psi 1 and it is represented by psi 2 1. Now coming to the next if we change the labels of these two electrons it should change the sign. Say here is the psi 1 2 if I change the labels as 2 1 then it should change the sign negative sign. If it does so we don't know at this moment we don't know whether it is changed or not but we are just having this situation if it changes the sign then this is called asymmetric wave function if it doesn't change the sign then this is called symmetric wave function these spin parts are separable from the space part like as we did in case of schrodinger wave equation that psi is a function of fx and gt fx part and gt part and which are separable from each other in the previous slide we have discussed the space part and in this slide we are going to discuss the spin part. So suppose these two electrons are having magnetic spin quantum number equal to plus half and minus half. How would you understand this term? So here plus half is represented by alpha and minus half is represented by beta. Further it can be understood as up spin and this beta can be understood as down spin. So here say this electron is in the alpha now this electron is having the wave function as alpha 2 spin wave functions right and the overall wave function for this system in which both the electrons are having up spins the situation for this system is like this psi spin 1 2 can be written like that but this is the one case where both the electrons are having up spins right there are several other possibilities of having these spins in different combinations. So here I am going to show you different possible combinations of spin. Because we are having two electrons, so there are four possible combinations. Alpha, alpha, both are up. Beta, beta, both are down. Alpha 1, beta 2. 1 is up. 2 is down. Alpha 2, beta 1. 2 is up. 1 is down. Right? So this we can understand in this manner. So here in case number 3 and 4 because we cannot tell which electron is alpha and which is beta in this case it is appropriate to express the spin states as the normalized linear combinations. We are going to take the linear combination of these spin states 3 and 4. So here this linear combination of state 3 and 4 can be written like this. So here I am just going to elaborate this. Here is the situation alpha 1 beta 2 plus alpha 2 beta 1 and 1 upon root 2 is the normalization constant. Just to normalize this and sigma plus represents that these two are in constructive interference. Whereas the second case in this alpha 1 beta 2 minus alpha 2 beta 1 and here is again the normalization constant 1 over root 2. This is represented by this sigma minus. These are the two situations for the situation number 3 and 4. These combinations allow one spin to be alpha and the other spin to be beta with equal probability. So that is why we have done this normalization. And this is also known as superposition of wave function. This is given in detail in the Silver Atkins physical chemistry book. Now I am showing you how you would understand these four different type of spin combinations. So here we are having the first combination alpha 1 alpha 2 and this is the second one. So you can understand this alpha 1 alpha 2. Here it is represented by S1, S2. S stands for spin. Say it is having half spin. It is again having half spin and both are up. So these two are plus spins. Plus plus. So the resultant for these two vectors will be equal to s and which is equal to 1. So here you can understand in this manner this resultant and for this combination we are having ms value is equal to 1. This I have explained in the term symbols video.
right that is why i elaborate it here again now coming to the next situation so here in case of beta 1 beta 2 we are having s1 in the minus half it is down spin so minus half minus half and resultant is equal to minus 1 so since the ms is having values modulus of resultant spin therefore it is again 1 in the previous case it is 1 in the second case it is 1 now coming to these combination so this plus combination will be represented like this so here is the s1 and s2 so this is plus half this is again plus half and resultant will be equal to so you ms is equal to 1 right in this case so here this represents the ms is equal to 1 now coming to this situation so here this situation shows that this s1 is minus 1 by 2 and this is plus 1 by 2 if you are getting confused with this so you can understand it in this manner this is a cone and this is another cone and here is if my spin is like this and here is the and in this way it is like this and their projections are considered here this blue arrows their projections along x y plane so they will be cancelled out and here in this case we are getting ms is equal to g in the previous cases we are having ms is equal to 1 now coming to the total wave function so total wave function means the wave function which comprises of space part and spin part i previously told you about the space part and spin part so space part represents the orbital part and spin part represents the orientation of the spins of the electrons present in the system now coming to here so space part was defined like psi 1 and psi 2 and spin part for the spin part we are having four combinations so here i just take first combination alpha 1 alpha 2 so here this is the space part and this is the spin part now coming to the all four different type of combinations to have this this total wave function so here so the first combination is this i hope you understand need not to explain here again here is the three and four now coming to the symmetry and anti-symmetry of these four combinations so first we will take this space part so in this space part if psi 1 into psi 2 will be changed as psi 2 psi 1 then order of the multiply of the functions cannot change the value therefore it will not change its sign sign will remain same means plus now coming to the next alpha beta part so alpha beta part will do the same exercise on changing the labels it will not change its sign and similarly for beta 1 and beta 2 this wave function number 1 doesn't change sign on exchanging the labeling of electrons therefore it is a symmetric wave function similarly for second it will again not change the sign therefore it is again symmetric now coming to the part number 3 part number 3 we are having sigma plus 1 2 is equal to 1 upon root 2 which is a normalization constant alpha 1 beta 2 plus beta 2 alpha 1 if i change the labeling it means this well this portion comes here and this portion goes to there then i will get this kind of situation here you can see if i change the order of these then again it will not change its sign if it doesn't change its sign then we get sigma plus 1 by 2 is equal to sigma plus 2 1 and it doesn't change the sign if psi 1 psi 2 doesn't change sigma plus 1 2 doesn't change then therefore it the overall system will not change its sign on, on exchange of electrons then this wave function is again a symmetric wave function now coming to the fourth one which is the last one in this case again this remains the same now we are moving towards the sigma minus part 
this is normalization constant 1 over root 2 and this is alpha 1 beta 2 minus alpha 2 beta 1 if i change the positions here then what you will see if i change this portion here and this portion here then in that case i need to take the minus sign outside this bracket then what you will see sorry this is sigma 2 1 sigma 1 2 if i convert it into sigma 2 1 then i need a negative sign over there we can say on exchange of electrons sigma minus 1 2 this minus represents this minus right so sigma minus 1 2 will change its sign on exchange of electrons so this part will change the sign and this part will remain the same so the overall wave function will change the sign and therefore this wave function is anti-symmetric with respect to the exchange of electrons so as it changes sign under particle exchange that is it is anti-symmetric and therefore it is acceptable for the Pauli's exclusion principle out of these four wave functions only to this Pauli's exclusion principle is applicable whereas for these systems Pauli's exclusion principle will not work so I hope you understand this concept of Pauli's exclusion principle in quantum mechanics and the symmetric and anti-symmetric wave functions how does they change with respect to the exchange of electrons if you find this video helpful please like share and subscribe thank you all thanks for watching